Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us here on this Wednesday afternoon. We've got, uh, I have three things to talk with you about today. Um, one is, of course, the COVID numbers. The second thing is I want to talk a little bit about vaccinations. I know everybody wants to talk about vaccinations. And the third thing is to talk just briefly about the board bill, the that we asked the Board of Aldermen to take up. We sent it over there yesterday, and it has to do with the allocation of federal dollars, that the 2021 COVID federal dollars. So um, just getting started on that. And then, of course, we will take your questions on those subjects or whatever's on your mind. So beginning, talking about COVID numbers, uh, not a big change from what we talked about on Monday, for those of you who who were with us on Monday. Yesterday, we uh, had 98 new cases in the city of St. Louis. Now, that's, that's down a little bit. We had last Saturday, we had 144, 138. So we're hoping that then 105 and yesterday, 98. Um, hopeful that those numbers trend down a bit because we did for this past week see an uptick in the number of cases in the city of St. Louis. Uh, and we of course speculate that that is as a result of uh, folks getting together over the holidays. And um, we, we were concerned about that, worried about that initially, but it looks like uh, of course that happened, but not to, not to a great extent. Now, um, in terms of the number of people that are currently hospitalized, 821 hospitalization numbers for any of you that are joining us new, hospitalization numbers run two days behind. So 821 people were in the hospital uh, two days ago, reporting today, uh, that were either COVID positive or suspected of being COVID positive. That's, that's down a bit. That's good. I think that's following our caseload down a bit. Uh, then 167 of those people, though, were in the ICU. That's still a high number. And of those, 98 people were on ventilators, also still a high number. Uh, patients admitted two days ago, 90, uh, excuse me, 96. There we go, 96 and 124 discharged. So uh, the hospitalization numbers are let me say it like this they're not worse they're a little bit better uh, and that's the same with our with our case count city of st louis cases continue in terms of uh number per 100,000. they continue to be the lowest in the region um, we're glad about that but they're still too high so we have to continue to uh focus on the mitigation strategies, which we've talked about for months now, uh, wearing a mask, uh, staying at least six feet apart, keeping your group really small. We also continue, uh, our health department continues to tell us that the community spread that we are seeing uh, it seems to continue to be happening among families, friends, neighbors, you know, groups that know one another. Uh, yesterday on the pandemic task force, um, Dr. Garza reported that the reproductive factor is about 1.1, a little bit over one. And um, so that is an improvement over what it was a month or so ago. Still, we really need to get it below one. When it is below one, that means that one person who has COVID affect, affects one other person. That's one to one. Uh, and right now we're a little bit higher than that. So if we get it down to, to below one, then our numbers will, will come down. So our, our numbers are still 43 people per 100,000 uh, in the city of St. Louis for the last seven days have been uh, COVID positive. Other, other counties in the region are as high as 78, um, 66, 58. So. Um, so those are our COVID numbers. And I think the difficulty right now is staying the course. Uh, we're all tired of it, but staying the course with regard to our mitigation strategies, mask wearing, social distancing, because we're all tired of it. And uh, we miss our social lives. 
and um, we know that there's that two vaccines have been approved and that vaccines vaccinations I should say vaccinations are on the horizon um, and so uh, you know it, it's hard we just we want to we want to socialize but please stay the course uh, with regard to vaccinations the city just launched uh, our uh, I'm, I'm calling it a sign up uh, survey it's sign up to be informed and you know some other counties in the in the area and I think Kansas City launched theirs today as well uh, and it really is you, you fill out this survey name address your phone number email address how can we get in contact with you what's your age what do you do for a living trying to figure out what group would you fall into so that we can notify you when your turn to get the vaccine is up now the city itself we don't actually put the shots in arms uh, but of course we are coordinating with hospitals with federally qualified health centers uh, we know for example i heard from several people today that um, are are older over 65 at, who are veterans and, and a few of them have been able to get uh are, are scheduled to get the vaccine through the va so this is all coming online at one time. Our sign-up sheet is up. Uh, take your time, don't crash it on us. Uh, it's up and um, we will then be able to notify you when it's your turn to, to get the vaccine. And we'll push information out uh, to those folks who have signed up. Of course, we will push it out through social media. We'll push it out through the news, et cetera, also. But this is a way of signing up the um what was i going to say about that shoot oh the city has not actually received any vaccines yet but we are expecting that that will happen i hope i hope it's this week but here we are on wednesday afternoon hasn't happened yet but our allocation uh we expect to get an allocation from the state i know that st louis county has gotten uh some doses st charles has gotten 400 but as you know, um, I'll, I'll give you this one in a minute. As you know, 400 doses or, or even 1,000 doses is, is, is nothing. We've got to have really a very increased supply of vaccines. Uh, a lot of people want to get the vaccine. I certainly want to get it when it's my turn. And um, so this is a way of, of, uh, of being notified about it. Jacob, what is this? Text STL COVID? You can also get text message updates as well. Okay. So we will also do text message updates, and we'll post this in the notes. You don't have to write it down. What you do is you text STL COVID to 888-777. We'll, we'll post that. Um, and you can sign up online. So... Um, this is all about trying to have lots of different methods to communicate with people. Bear in mind, we are still in Tier 1A. And Tier 1A is healthcare workers, hospital workers. It is nursing home workers and residents. And it is now first responders. And so we are still hospital workers and healthcare workers. Uh, the hospitals are reaching out now to uh, doctor's offices and dentists and folks that are affiliated with them so this is beginning to roll out not as quickly as we would like but I am optimistic that 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 supply is gonna is gonna start coming in here in the next uh, few weeks so um, this is probably uh, the biggest logistical um, project that our country has undertaken in terms of a civilian project of course we know that military projects are very logistically uh, uh, challenging but you know when you're trying to meet to reach everyone everyone in your country you have to be able to do it in multiple ways all right that's what I know about vaccinations and then the last thing I wanted to visit with you about is that we have uh, asked a couple of uh, alder women 
Alderwoman Hubbard and Alderwoman Murphy are the current co-sponsors. I'm sure there'll be many more. To introduce a bill which would allow us to accept and spend any uh, additional funds that we get from what we call the 2021 COVID bill that Congress passed right before Christmas, passed and was signed right before Christmas. And we don't know exactly how much we're going to get at this point in time because a lot of the regulations have, have really not been, been written on some of this, but it's, it's all coming fast and furiously. We do believe that we're going to get a little over $9 million directly to the city for uh, rental assistance. That's additional funds for rental assistance for people. You know, that's very important that we're able to keep people in their current housing because certainly it's much more expensive and not as good to take care of someone once they become homeless. And so this is a homeless prevention. $9 million should be coming our way in a few weeks. We applied, uh, you had to apply by uh, yes, yesterday, I think. We actually applied on the first day, uh, which was last Thursday or Friday, to be able to get that $9 million directly from the federal government so it did not have to go through the state. That was available to uh, cities and counties with more than 200,000 people. Some of you will remember that um, the, the first CARES Act money went directly to counties with more than 500,000 people, and that does not include us, but that also means that we did not get nearly as much funding. Uh, St. Louis County got 50% more funding per resident than the city of St. Louis did just because we had to go through the state and the state kept some of that money. Uh, I get it, the state has needs too, but. Um, we are closer to the folks, and so, so we did apply for and do expect to get about $9 million directly out of this uh, new 2021 COVID uh, bill. So in addition to that $9 million, I should mention that while we don't know the exact amount, we have uh, asked the Board of Aldermen to approve accepting up to $75 million, accepting and spending up to $75 million that may come through health, uh, our health department and human services department, uh, and $4 million that can be available to help people with their water bills, people that can't pay their water bill. There's a specific, um, a spe specific allocation for that in this 2021 CARES Act. So all of that is in the board bill that we uh, sent to the Board of Aldermen yesterday. It'll take a few weeks for them to pass that. We're very hopeful that that they'll do it expeditiously, and, and we think that they will. Of course, they, they wanna get these federal funds too so that we can get help to the people who need it. Uh, you may have also seen, and we posted this yesterday on our, on our website, that uh, businesses are now able to apply for uh, PPP again. This is really through your banks or through the SBA. We posted that yesterday on, on our, um, I said website, I should say on our social media. Uh, so that all the businesses uh, were aware of that. Uh, it is uh, something that anybody who, who owns a business should, should really want to take a look at and think about doing, and it's always better to apply early than it is to apply late. So uh, we, we put a link up to that. Okay, I guess that was four things. Do we have questions? Quite a few questions today. Lots Mayor. of questions. Lots of COVID vaccine questions. First question from Joe. Uh, curious what your thoughts are on where the vaccine delay is coming from. Do you think this, this is happening at the state or federal level? Joe, I don't know for sure. As I mentioned earlier, this is a huge logistical issue for our country. Uh, I do know that the federal government is now not holding back doses they expect to push a lot more doses out. Um, so right now we're just trying to work with both our federal and our state partners so that we can get uh, dosages as soon as possible. But it has been a huge challenge, continues to be a huge challenge, and uh, just something that we have to work through. And, and we are staying very vigilant on this because we wanna make sure we have access for, for our residents, for our people. Uh, hospitals have gotten good allocations and they are being extremely helpful and collaborative. 
to trying to, to help us get vaccinations in arms as soon as possible. Uh, Jeannie's question is also about vaccination. What do you know it, that it takes to trigger when a city or jurisdiction is approved to receive its shipment of vaccines? Um, I don't, know, I don't know what all the criteria are, but let me say you have to be a designated vaccinator site, as I understand it, and, um, and then you have to put in your order. Uh, we ordered 5,000 to begin with. I don't know what we will get, but we have, uh, between police, fire, corrections officers, EMS, people work in the morgue, we have a lot of employees that we really need to get vaccinated now. It, and so that was sort of our initial ask. Uh, we'll wait for that. Um, hopefully we'll get some of that soon. Uh, Andrew's question about the new sign up process. Is that separate or the same from when uh, we issue alerts like Amber Alerts or weather alerts? Or are they different? Mm. This is a different sign up process, uh, Andrea, because this process asks you to, well, how old are you? What do you do for a living? So that we can try to figure out which tier you belong in, that you fit in, uh, in order to notify when you might be available to get the vaccine. So they're similar in that they are sign-up processes, but we need to know more than just your cell phone number in order to say, oh, now we've moved, right now we're in 1A. You know that we're moving to 1B. That includes, 1B will include teachers, for example. 1B will include childcare workers, uh, everyone over 65. So we have to know a little more about you um, to figure out what tier you fit in and when you might be a, uh, el eligible to receive the vaccination. Uh, Pat's question has to do with some of those phases you've talked about, Mayor. Who is getting to make the decisions about who gets vaccinated first and when? The CDC issues those guidelines. Uh, they have issued them, they've tweaked them a little bit in recent days. But the state of Missouri and uh, city of St. Louis, St. Louis County, we're all following the CDC guidelines. Um, on vaccines as well, Yuri's question, Mayor, has to do with uh, folks who are not accepting the vaccine. Mm -hmm. What happens with the vaccine and what is being done for those who don't want to wait? Hmm. I'm not following that part. completely, but let me take a shot at it here. So. When, when, your, um, when it's your turn, when your category is eligible to receive the vaccination and you receive the notification, that says you're eligible. We know that not everybody wants to get the vaccination. Uh, the hospitals yesterday on the pandemic task force call said that they are running over 60% and this would be of their employees. And, and what everyone believes we are seeing now is that Maybe people in the first week, there weren't as many who signed up, but as they, as we all begin to see so many people get the vaccination and not have adverse effects, then you might not have been ready last week, but maybe you'll be ready next week to receive the vaccination. So uh, hopefully we will get a really good uptake on folks being willing to take the vaccination. Uh, Ned's question has to do with COVID and rental relief assistance. Will there be a new, we've had applications, lots of those, but will there be a new application process with any new uh, funding that we're able to get under the new stimulus package? Um, most likely, yes. We are waiting for the regulations from uh, the federal government right now um, and, and working through those. For example, we know that uh, the new $9 million is eligible for rental assistance, but not eligible for mortgage assistance. So we will try to utilize the funds that we have uh, to serve as many people as possible. So on COVID, Jeannie has a question or asks you if you could please emphasize that the city is not closed and that many people are operating well within the established guidelines. Jeannie, you said it well. No, of course the city is not closed. We, um, we never closed our parks. We did not close our restaurants. Uh, I'm talking about after that, that first eight week shutdown, but you know, over the last six months. Uh, our businesses are open. They are operating 
for the most part within the guidelines. Those that are not operating within the guidelines, of course, we have a little chat with them. Uh, and so um, cities open 50% occupancy on restaurants, 11 p.m. closing time. I know that's a sticking point for many people. Uh, but right now, our cases are still quite high, even though they're better than the rest of the region, they're still quite high. And uh, we feel like we have hit a good balance between uh, hopefully allowing businesses, particularly restaurants, uh, mostly what we're talking about here, to make it, keep their employees employed, as well as giving people the opportunity to, to go out to dinner in a safe way. So on that note, Brianna's watching, and her question is, or their question is, uh, when are the bars and restaurants going back to regular hours? Um, we don't have a date for that, Brianna. I don't expect that's going to come uh, until our numbers get significantly lower. So some folks have questions about other sort of related topics. Uh, about downtown and Washington Avenue Jersey barriers, Mayor, Justin's mm -hmm. question has to do with, will those uh, traffic calming measures be removed anytime soon? You know, it's something that we're thinking about, um, particularly, they've been, many of them have been moved to the side uh, because by now, normally we would have snow. Believe me, I'm not wishing for snow. Anybody who's the mayor will have a whole new attitude about snow. Uh, and, uh, but, so they've been moved to the side. Uh, we may, we're gonna work with the uh, downtown association, downtown STL, which I think is combined with Greater St. Louis. We've got to uh, reach the balance here with trying to be sure that we can um, interrupt the fast driving, the illegal driving, reckless driving, at, but as well as allow people access to the places that they want to be. So Laura is watching and actually has a very good question and point. Wants to know if you can assure people who sign up for the new notifications about vaccines if the information they provide to the health department will remain private. Yes, Laura, it will remain private. Uh, it'll remain with the health department. And then the last question I'm seeing so far today um, is about our new uh, 911 and co-responder model mayor with behavioral mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. Will you still be able to potentially get a police officer to your situation under this new program as soon as possible if you feel like you still need one? Oh, of course. Of course, um, you know, many of, we get about 700, over 700,000 911 calls a year. Think about that for a minute. Over 700,000 911 calls a year. Um, we dispatch about 250,000 of those. And you might say, well, why don't you dispatch all of them? Well, it's because, let's say if you see a car accident or something, there might be 10 people call that in. We'll, we dispatch it once. So. That's it. But even dispatching uh, 250,000 calls a year, we're expecting that this new 911 diversion might divert 5,000 calls a year to mental health services. Many times when a call comes into 911, uh, it may require police response and then maybe a handoff um, to a social worker. But absolutely, if there's a, a dangerous, a public safety situation, police officers will, will respond. When I lied, we have another question from Adam, curious about um, large events and conventions in the city. What mm -hmm. is some of the criteria the city's watching to be able to have large public gatherings to conduct business? So Adam, we have worked with the CVC and set up several uh, metrics, if you will, to where we think we could have large events again. And it really goes to uh, number of cases, number of hospitalizations. We are, we are very far from meeting those metrics at this point in time. But through the combination of continuing the mitigation strategies and getting the vaccinations rolled out, we certainly hope that we're able to go uh, to have some larger events in a few months. And that's not an exact answer because none of us know exactly what's going to happen with the COVID cases. You all know that um, there will be a hockey game. I believe it's tonight. I don't know. Um, soon. 
and uh, somebody will tell me if I it's tonight. It yeah, I believe it's tonight. I might be a day or two off, but uh, where they're only going to have 300 um, spectators, and they have invited um, some of the first responders and to to be able to come see the hockey game. This is all, uh, you know, it's still going to be a while before they can have thousands of people there. But we all have to work through this. The numbers have to be going down. The hospitalizations have to go down and stay down um, because we certainly don't want it. We don't want to happen what happened this summer and fall. Our numbers were pretty good in the summer. And if you would look back at maybe July or August, they were a third of what they are right now. And, but then we hit this fall, October, November, and our numbers just spiked up so, so quickly. So we don't want that to happen again. So taking as many precautions as we can. It's 2.30 and that's it for questions. It's 2.30. Thank you all for being with us today. Uh, I hope you, um, you know, found some of the information helpful. I'm sure we've posted a link by now to where you can sign up on our website to get information about vaccinations. Um, thank you. Appreciate it. This is changing. This vaccination situation is changing quickly and, uh, the logistics of it are difficult, but through the pandemic task force, hospitals, public health departments, we're working through this. Now we just need a supply. Thank you all.